Alright guys, this is Young Astronomers and we're going to be giving you a video broadcast on one of our first telescopes, the Traveller Telescope and um, it has a aperture of 4.9 inches and a diameter of a primary mirror of 76 millimeters. Um, through this telescope, which is a 700 focal length, you can see the uh, moons of Jupiter, the four big moons, um, the huge dot on Jupiter, the rings of Saturn, and the the um, at the Earth's moon. And um, I'll be give, I'll be showing you some pictures of them at the end of the video. And um, basically, the focal length means that um, the higher the focal length the uh, crisper the images be, will be and it means that how much light can enter the telescope um, my friend's uh, telescope it's a, it's a refractor that's one that we're going to be reviewing next that's got a 900 focal length 900 millimeter focal length sorry uh, and that means it can that means the um, the uh, images that you're going to see on the telescope are more crisper and more light can enter the telescope um, on the tube itself, we've got a we've got a really really good uh, image focuser, um, which is uh, which you can screw on the lenses for it. I'll show just show you the lenses it comes with. It comes with three, and it comes with two Barlows. I'll just show you them. There's one. That's the weakest. There's number two. That's the second strongest, and three. That's the most strongest lens that comes with it. Um, the smaller the uh, eyepiece that you look through, the uh, stronger it will be. So it's harder to get like a, a camera, like camera lens down it. Um, here's the 1.5 Barlow, and here's the three times Barlow lens. Um, it has a great fine scope. It's it's a crosshair one instead of a red dot. Um, I would say the crosshair is more precise because it's actually because a crosshair means that there's two lines crossing each other and then obviously the cross bit where the two lines meet is hopefully where the um, where the object that you're looking at will be. Um, as you can see if we move down now it's a equatorial mount with a counterweight um, If and it's got slow motion controls if you take off the slow motion controls it can um, it can have dual axis and sing single axis motors which means that you don't have to worry about finding the uh, image that's on the telescope, it will just automatically track it for you at different speeds that you set it to. Um, it's got a uh, it's got a lens holder at the bottom with the tripod, and the tripod can extend twice its length. Um, I've got it on about uh, a quarter its length now, so it is actually quite small when you actually uh, don't use the tripod uh, with extending it. Um, and uh, um, I'd say it's a really, really good telescope. It's got um, a dovetail attachments uh, and knobs, which means that uh, you can just if I unscrew this, you can tilt it that way, and if I unscrew this one, you can tilt it upwards. Um, I'd say it's a really, really good scope. I'd give it probably about seven, eight out of ten for young for young people who want a nice, easy telescope. Simply because the price is around the hundred mark. It's not really a uh, popular telescope. Um, but the price is really really good. Um, the next telescope I'll be reviewing is a refractor so it's a completely different one because this is a reflector because it uses two mirrors, a primary and a secondary. Primary gathers all the light, reflects it back up to the secondary one which puts all the light through the lens and you'll be able to see it. A refractor basically just uses um, different kinds of uh, um, lenses actually in the tube and it refracts them making the image bigger um, you can have different types of lenses you can just have bog standard and you can have Cassegrain ones which are the best in the world they're best made by the best people um, and that can actually make a difference um, by um, how, how much magnification and focal length you have um, but um, back to this telescope um, I'll give it a 9 out of 10 price is around 110 100 pounds um, cat, because it's equatorial you can have motors on it and um, I should think you, if you're going into real technical detail um, you can probably attach uh, a SIN scan which is a, a kind of like a database full of coordinates which you can just search through the sky and it will automatically track but that normally starts at around 250 to 280 pounds so I wouldn't really bother going in that um, this is Young Astronomers giving you our first uh, telescope that we used and I'll 
See you later.